Hello and welcome. My name is Fami Kadiri. I'm a technical account manager with Aquilas. I'll be walking you through Kubernetes authentication and secrets injection using native Kubernetes constructs and the Aquilas secrets injection webhook to fetch secrets from the Aquilas Vault platform into our Kubernetes applications. In terms of the agenda, I'll briefly talk about the problems we're solving, why you may not want to use Kubernetes secrets, how we're addressing this at Aquilas. I'll also provide you with a brief demo of the overall solution. And most of the tools I use for this demo are freely available, and I've listed the prerequisites you'll need so you can follow along with me. The first question we want to tackle is why this approach? Kubernetes has its own key store, so why would we want to leverage an external secrets management system instead of using the built-in Kubernetes secrets? The short answer is that Kubernetes secrets has some limitations that make it a non-starter for many enterprise deployments. First of all, Kubernetes secrets are stored unencrypted, so anyone with basic access to the cluster can literally decode the value of the secrets within the Kubernetes backend storage. Second, secrets sprawl is a problem. You can easily have dozens of secrets stored within YAML files or repositories, and this creates operational bottlenecks and poses operational risks where those secrets can inadvertently be leaked or compromised. Third, when it comes to development, there's a methodology for building software as a service apps called 12 Factor. It outlines a series of procedures for modern app development best practices, and one of those procedures is for the app not to have any state locally. Everything provided to it is in either environment variables or files. And the point is, when you embrace environment variables and external files and external persistent systems, then you end up with a more microservices-based architecture, and you're able to have one single code base for all life cycles just based on the environments that are coming in. How this translates to secrets management is that we're able to get to our end state of having secrets be injected in the environment variables without altering the application or the application code. And so the developer doesn't know what the secrets are, doesn't need to know what those secrets are, only the application knows what those secrets are at runtime. Aquilas has a webhook that listens for events and injects an executable into containers inside a pod, which then requests secrets from the Aquilas vault through annotations in your pod deployment file. We have two operation modes of injecting secrets, the init container and sidecar. The first operation mode of secret injection is the init container. In this mode, secrets are pre-populated into a pod before an application starts as part of the pod lifecycle. The webhook looks for annotations that correspond to a specific schema. It then adds the init container that authenticates and does the work. The application then reads the secrets from the keyless vault through environment variables. And so at the moment of starting up the application, that's when the application needs to read the environment variables. And this happens right at startup. The second operation mode of secret injection is the sidecar container. In this mode, another container runs alongside the init container. This sidecar mode has a few benefits. One of them is the ability to track changes of secrets. We can configure the interval cycle of how frequently we'll look for any kind of changes to the secret itself and inject a secret into the file system of the pod. Now, this gives you the flexibility of addressing use cases where the secret could change or the application is long lasting and you want it to re-authenticate on a regular schedule to get the secret. It's worth mentioning that we also have support for Kubernetes external secrets and integration with external KMS. Here's a sample architecture of the demo environment I'll be walking you through. On the very left hand side, I have a namespace called my apps and I have two pods running in this namespace. One of the pods will have my init annotations to fetch a static secret and the other pod will have the sidecar annotations to fetch a dynamic secret from a MongoDB deployment. To the right of that, I have the Kate's Injector namespace. This will be the dedicated namespace where we install our Kubernetes webhook injection service. 
And as I mentioned earlier, this webhook will listen for events and inject an executable inside a pod, which will then fetch secrets from the Aquila's vault. Next, I have the default namespace, and this is where I've deployed the gateway token reviewer to authenticate our pods with Aquilas, and I've assigned it the cluster role binding permissions to listen on all namespaces in the cluster. In Kubernetes, the API server needs to authenticate every request it receives. We're going to use the JOT authentication mechanism built into Kubernetes itself. Every Kubernetes cluster has its own JOT authentication, which is the JSON web token. It's the token it uses to authenticate, and this is built into Kubernetes. We know, based on Kubernetes itself, that every Kubernetes service account has a JOT. So we can use this JOT for authentication, but we have to do it in a known and trusted way, using something we created, we control, and we trust because we are the ones who created it. And so the first step here is to create our service account that we know and trust. He's going to be our trusted authority, our inside guy. His job is to validate the JOT of any service account that talks to us and verify the service account is in that namespace. The other thing we need to consider is that Kubernetes service accounts out of the box is scoped to a single namespace. We want the token reviewer to validate JOT tokens for other namespaces in the cluster. And so we need to give him extra permissions through the cluster role binding. Next, there are additional pieces of information we need to extract, such as the cluster host IP, the cluster issuer, and CA cert, which the gateway will use to communicate to the cluster. And I'll walk you through this in the demo. However, an important point to mention is the cluster itself does not interact with the external SaaS, Aquila SaaS, directly. It utilizes the gateway as a trusted host for this cluster. We're dealing with sensitive information here, like the CA certificate and Kate's issuer, etc. And so none of this information is exposed or exported to the Aquila SAS. The Kubernetes cluster doesn't have to be publicly reachable. It can be private as long as the gateway can interact with the cluster. Finally, I have my gateway also installed in its own dedicated namespace. Let's jump into the demo, but before we do that, here's the list of prerequisites you'll need in order to follow along with me in this demo. First, you will need the Aquila CLI. We support Mac, Linux, and Windows. If you have already registered for an account with Aquilas, browse to console.aquilas.io slash integration center, download and install the CLI from there, or uh, you can get the curl command for your operating system from our docs page and follow the instructions to install it locally on your machine. You'll also need to have Terraform installed and access to Kubernetes and any of the cloud service providers. This demo is running on a three node cluster in Azure. You'll need a minimum of Kubernetes 1.16, but we recommend Kubernetes 1.21 or higher because there's a complete set of capabilities in the later versions of Kubernetes that we can support. You will also need to have an Aquilas API gateway installed. Make sure to have your access ID that you've used to configure your CLI added to the allowed access IDs list in your gateways values.yaml file. Otherwise, you'll get permission errors and you won't be able to complete the Kubernetes authentication step. Finally, download the Terraform files. You can find those on my GitHub repo here. Here's my Kubernetes config file. We start off by defining our environment variables. You can see an example of the variables you'll need here. If you've set up the gateway already, you'll have an access ID, API key, and gateway address ready to go. For the Kate's issuer, you can either exec into the pod running the gateway or spin up a pod and run this kubectl command to read the issuer. You'll also need to specify the Kate's auth name and Kate's auth config name you want to use. This can be anything you want as long as it's meaningful to you. Next, we create the gateway token reviewer and cluster role binding. Then we read the Kubernetes secret name into our state file. This is needed to extract our JOT token and CA cert. And as we mentioned earlier, all of this information stays local within the cluster. It's used by the local gateway. 
it's not exported to the Aquila SAS environment. The following resources is what we need to configure in Aquilas. The auth method, the auth configuration details, RBAC rules to map the auth method to an access row. We create the Kubernetes auth method. The result contains an access ID and a private key that you will need in the next resource for the Kate's auth configuration in our gateway. We create the Kate's auth config using the following parameters name of the configuration which we defined in an environment variable earlier, the access ID which was created with our auth method resource, the private key which was also created with our auth method, the token reviewer, Kate's issuer name, our Kate's host name, and the cluster CA cert. Next we're going to create an auth method and access role association. This is part of our RBAC rules. The auth method needs to be associated to an access role. The access role will then have CRUD permissions we can apply to it. Here, I've restricted this to the namespace MyApps so that only pods in the MyApps namespace are authorized to use this auth method. For our CRUD permissions, I've restricted it to read and list only. I've also restricted the virtual file path where secrets will be fetched from forward slash kates forward slash star this is an item rule which basically means it's limited to reading and listening from secrets and keys aka items uh, that are located in the slash kates virtual file path the second part of our configuration is to install the secrets injection webhook we specify the Helm chart details, name, repository, chart, the namespace where we want it to be created into, and an explicit dependency to only run after our auth configuration is in place. I then place the entire values.yaml file from the secrets injector Helm chart into the Terraform configuration file. It's literally a cut and paste from the Helm chart values.yaml file. The only thing I changed is the environment variables where I reused variables we defined earlier on and configuration parameters from our Kate's auth setup configuration. Initialize this configuration and apply it. Our Terraform configuration was successful. We have six new resources added. Let's see what this looks like in our Aquila SAS console. In the SAS console, I'll click on auth methods. I'll filter for AKS to show me all of the auth methods I configured in Azure. You can see I have two auth method types. One of them is an API key. The other one is our Kubernetes type that we just created. If I click on the Kubernetes auth method, you can see I have additional parameters I could have set, but we chose not to set those for this demo. Instead, we will use RBAC rules to limit access to this auth method by namespace so that only specific namespaces have permissions to interact with secrets. At the very bottom of this list, I'll click on the Associate with Roles drop-down arrow. You can see this is associated to the Kate's role with subclaim of namespace equals my apps. Now that we've confirmed this role association exists, I'll click on the Access Roles from the left-hand side menu, and then click Kate's role in the root virtual file path. On the right hand side of the access roles menu, I now see the auth method we just created, the type, the subclaim. Below that, I have the rule type, aka secrets and keys, where it's restricted to the Kate's virtual file path with read and list permissions. This role can only interact with secrets and keys. It can't create access roles or auth methods or targets. Next, let's take a look and see what's inside the forward slash Kate's virtual file path. On the left hand side, I'll click on secrets and keys. I'll select the Kate's virtual file path and you can see I have one static secret defined called Kate's secret. If I unhide the value, you can see the secret value. I also have a subfolder called secrets. Inside the folder, I have a dynamic secret from MongoDB which is a short-lived secret created just in time whenever I request a secret. When I click on Get Dynamic Secret, I get a newly created username and password. 
clicking on the Dynamic Secret Permissions drop-down arrow, this will expose the permission sets for the secret. For the purposes of the demo, I set the secret to a very short TTL of 40 seconds. This means the secret will be newly created when I click on Get Dynamic Secrets or Read the Secret from the Pod Container. It will only last 40 seconds and will be deleted afterwards. Next, let's test this configuration. I'm going to go back to my terminal. First, we're going to apply the init mode where we fetch a secret from an environment variable. I have the env.yaml file here that we can take a look at. The first item to note when I open the file is the annotation under the spec element. Our webhook looks for this annotation, then adds the init container to the pod. Next is the environment variable mySecret. This variable receives the secret value from the Achilles vault. The webhook populates the secret into a pod before an application starts. The secret is stored in memory and only available to the process that requested it. Let's apply this file and look at the output in the logs. And the secret value has been successfully read from the environment variable. It's the same secret we configured in the console. This is fine if I only need to read a secret at application startup, but what if you need to retrieve a new secret periodically? We'll use the sidecar mode for this use case. I'll cd into the sidecar folder on my terminal and open the sidecar.yaml file. We have a few more annotations compared to the previous example. We enable the sidecar annotation. In addition to the init container, we specify the virtual file path for our dynamic MongoDB secret. We set a refresh interval of 30 seconds so that it will retrieve a new secret every 30 seconds. And we fetch the last two versions of our secret. Our webhook will now add two containers, the init and the sidecar container. We're going to apply this YAML file and check the logs to look for our secret, both the original secret we pulled and the refreshed secret. And you can see we successfully fetched two dynamic secrets from our MongoDB database. Again, both are short-lived and created just in time. This concludes our demo for today, but before we wrap up, you're welcome to use the application yourself. You can register at console.achilles.io and create a free account. If you don't subscribe to a service within the 30-day period, you'll drop down to a bronze service tier. All free accounts come with the bronze service tier, which will give you access to three clients and up to 50 secrets for free. You'll also have access to our support email and support channel on Slack if you get stuck along the way.